to fear the world. It has gone mad. Hello everybody and welcome back to Darkest Dungeon 2. We are we here at the, the start of our journey once again. Of human weakness. Indeed. Here at the start of our journey once again. One the cycle. On the borderlands. Half swallowed by the stain. Half swallowed by the stain, yes. First cycle has been complete. And we push forward into the you second. Have in your crumbling denial long enough. We have a few new additions now the at the crossroads. Who will step forward into the light? Who will step forward indeed? And the main new addition here is our Hellion, which I'm very, very excited to introduce. Yes, we are back here again with Felfer, our new Hellion. Of course, Josiah, Dismas, Jane, and Courtney as well. Here at the crossroads, ready to go again. And this time, Pride. we're going to be More swapping out... More devastating than the horrors of a hundred campaigns. Indeed. We're going to be swapping out Dismas for our Hellion here. In fact, I'm going to put her in slot one because she does indeed have the lovely, the beautiful Iron Swan. Anyone from the first game will know how powerful this move is. But yes, of course, we need to introduce this character get into her backstory, so let's do that now. This is a backstory by EGB. She was the clan leader's child. She was born with the blood of the rulers running within her veins. Crafted from the strongest warriors in the land, this clan remains undaunted no matter the threat they faced. Every one of them faced greatness or death amidst corpses and forgotten weapons, and Felther was the daughter of the one who was strong enough to live until he was a wise old man. She was supposed to be the same, trained by the strongest, raised by the strongest. She grew confident, she grew brash and all too eager. She had thrown herself into every training with the ferocity of a beast, and she had truly become the strongest for nobody could de defeat her in equal combat, and she truly believed that she was ready. Her father, a wise old man, had seen differently. He knew that she was not ready to lead as much as she was ready to be crushed, but she did not see it. Blinded by endless pride and assurances of those who believed they'd be unstoppable with her at the helm. In a desperate attempt to stop his child's madness, the mighty lord of the clan issued a statement. He would give her command of one of uh, his armies if she manages to beat all who would challenge her in one go. He did not believe she could be stopped. She grew too strong um, to be challenged by those who lived within their lands, but perhaps, just perhaps, they are able to whittle her down. Whittle her down until she stops and looks around. Yet she charged forward, undaunted and soon she stood at the command of many men who believed her unstoppable. They called her father an old fool, pleaded him to let her prove her mettle, and with a heavy heart, he allowed it. Though it seemed war is never equal or fair. They were caught in an ambush. Their enemies had long awaited the chance to strike at the dirty savages as they called them. They feared the clan more than brigands, more than strangers from far lands. They had numbers on their side. They swarmed Felther's army, intent on wiping them out. She had fought, she had slain all that approached her. She focused on the fight ahead, believing they'd become victorious if they continued fighting. And yet, when she turned around, all those who'd followed behind her lay slain on the ground peppered with arrows, slashed with swords, and stabbed with spears. Only she stood alive, surrounded by corpses of both her own and others. Fear and guilt swelled within her. Panic overtook the young mind. She could not handle being the cause. What, um, was she not enough? Did she not slay them fast enough? Did she not give enough commands? Did she fail at protecting those who she cared about? For the first time, she cowered. Her resolve broke into a myriad of pieces as she turned to flee, 
flee from the danger of her enemies and herself. She realized what had truly happened only when she woke up within a dirty ditch deep within the forest, clutching onto a halibut with a shaking hand as her whole body shuddered with anguish and guilt. She wanted to die, yet she could not. Not until she redeems herself, somehow, anyhow. Of course, that was impossible. Her people hated her. Unworthy, useless, a traitor. If you cannot fight, at least die a warrior. She was exiled, wandering aimlessly across the globe, growing old as she searched for, searched for a chance to prove herself worthy once more. Until finally, she saw a strange light in the distance, at the crossroads. Just a great backstory there for our Hellion here. I'm so excited to try and use this character. It's going to be so fun. But first of all, we have to go through a few diary entries of these characters as they arrive to the crossroads, as well as the last thoughts as our previous cycle unfortunately perished. So first of all, we shall start with Dismas here. Dismas watched as the flames consumed his vision, leaving him in a black emptiness where nothing existed, where nothing could exist, and yet he floated there, somehow a wisp in an endless nothing. Everything around him was silent, or it should have been, but there was a sound, a quiet humming. Perhaps he wasn't dead, instead of in the moment before crossing the Reaper's door. Images flashed to, um, to life before his eyes, he saw his memories in them, the life he had lived in, the ca in that carriage moving towards the great mountain. He saw the taverns and smelt the, the warmth, and he saw memories that were not his own. A run-down house in, nearly, uh, in a nearly wasted hamlet, the time he had spent building it with a man whose blood ran strong like iron. More of the memories floated around him, showing a woman with light blue skin and an empty suit of armour that glowed from within and a man that could use the occult. These are your memories, Dismas, an ethereal voice said. Dismas turned around somehow and saw a figure made of an inky substance. He could have sworn he knew who this entity was. We don't have much more time before the endless cycle begins again. Um, the beginning um, begins again, the beginning said. Remember yourself, Dismas. Dismas awoke suddenly and in the back of a carriage making its way down an old road to a great mountain. He could barely recall what had just happened. Was it a dream? However, those last words lingered in his mind. Remember yourself, Dismas. Amazing writing there by Strafe. Next up, we have um, Courtney here, our uh, plague doctor. Courtney was struck hard in the jaw by, by the fanatic's flail and fell soon after. Coated in an ash and unmoving, the others left her behind. Unbeknownst to them, she was still breathing, and as Dismas stepped into the carriage, she desperately tried to reach out, but her hand hardly moved. Left alone with her thoughts and a, a dying body, she reflected. She had fought well beside him, hadn't she? She and Jane had both become enamoured by him. He was a warrior, deadly, defiant and refusing to die. Here she was, the fire slowly consuming her. It didn't even hurt. She knew not what was keeping her alive now, but she was still breathing. Blackness lurked at the edges of her vision, closing in. What had happened? Why had all the cities burnt, the dead risen from their graves? What had happened to her world? She was supposed to be its saviour, rescuing it from the fate of death, and here she was, succumbing to it. No, do not die. Just stand up. Dismas did it. You are no different. Flag down the coach and... And... And as the blackness fully engulfed her vision, her mind became fuzzy. Her last coherent thought was remarking how strange death felt. Suddenly, her body responded and she lurched up, looking around the darkness, a foul ichor dripping from her hands. She had just died, hadn't she? Or at least she'd come close to it. But from what? She turned her head to the light that she saw in the distance. A lantern light coming from a sign that said the crossroads. God damn, that was eerie. That is one by TEA. On to Josiah next. Josiah raised his shield, pushing Dismas out of the way. A flaming fist of the demonic creature brutally air bashing against the still worn out with time. It was not it was not enough. He protected the other warrior, but he felt his hand giving out, not able to repel the strike like he used to. 
He feels himself being bashed back, ribs cracked with his armor, blood leaking from his lips as his only eye stared defiantly at the battered beast. Come at me, you filthy demon. He is a goner. He knows it. He knows that the others know it. There's no turning back from here. He forces himself to push up, to stand strong. He cannot fall before he is sure the beast can be felled. That they can push onwards. That his death will buy them precious seconds, minutes, or maybe even hours. He spits blood to the side, raising his shield once more. Metal-clad hand holding onto the mace that had served him for as long as he could remember. Not a bad way to go out. That was his last thought that, um, once he rushed at that beast once more. Seeing it rear its ugly hand, coated in flames once more, it swings and he felt the crack. The silence, he was hoping it wasn't enough. And his eyes opened once more as he stared at the fire of his camp, slightly confused. Why does he feel he's supposed to be somewhere else? Well, never mind. He has to move soon. He must help the others who need it. And uh, he must help those who need it until he cannot anymore. Amazing. And then last one here is by me for Jane. One by one, her fellow warriors fall to the burning hands of the tortured souls in this ruinous city. With each death's blow, Jane feels the hope diminishing and the light fading. Until suddenly, she turns to her side, realizing she's all alone. Everyone else is dead, and she's left stranded by the side of the road. She feels a cold breeze as the last flicker of light fades and all hope is lost, only to open her eyes once more to see what must be her executioner. A bolt of lightning pierces her chest and for a moment all is silent, and then she looks down from the terrible storms in the night sky to find herself once more at the crossroads. My goodness, this has been some really, really good writing. My goodness, this is just... I, I'm, I'm in love. It's so good. It's amazing. Like I said, there's going to be a lot in this series of, of talking, especially at the start of episodes like we are now. Uh, but that's part of the story building and the world building that we're trying to uh, that we're trying to do here. Next up, we have a few diary entries of people that have just arrived at the crossroads. We'll get into those now. First up is a diary from Felfer at the crossroads. The lone warrior, uh, clad in barbaric garbs, stood in the middle of the field. Her eyes glanced around herself as she silently counted the bodies. Most of them human, some of them are not. She notes to herself that it was ten years. If this was ten years ago, she'd be ecstatic. But instead, um, but in but she'd insist on finding more and slaying more. But death did not matter to her much anymore. Be it her own or the death of others. Just like she had little care for the scratches and wounds across her strong body. Is it enough? When will it be enough? She questioned the air, a tone of resigned and exhaustion flowing from within. A tired sigh escapes her lips. Not because she is tired physically. No, it was something else. She doesn't say much to the bodies of the fallen warriors and creatures. Um, her trusty glaive goes behind her back and as usual, a lazy hand swiping away the remnants of blood from her cheek. She doesn't bother much to clean the other bloodstains, as it seems like there's going to be rain soon, and it'll do nicely to wash away the crimson. She hears the growling of sounds um, of fighting in the distance. She has to move on once more. Felther takes one last look around the battlefield, pausing um, at a small buck clutched in one of the man's hands. He was dead by the time she arrived. A strange desire, over desire overcomes her to approach the corpse and wrangle the book from its hands. She opens it and there's some writing, but it's otherwise empty. She glances at the man. She hesitates only for a moment before crouching and finding some writing utensils on his person. There, there. Why does she bother? What will she even write? It doesn't matter. A good way to pass the time, right? She flinches when she hears the growling getting much closer. There's no time. Soon she is already walking to the nearest road. The beasts choose not to pursue her, as there's plenty of other nourishment in these bloody fields as is. She moves slowly, apathetic gaze focusing on her surroundings, shrouded in mist. Though soon she pauses, a light in the distance, a strange alluring light. It won't be so bad if I approached it, right? Again, amazing. Next up we have one for uh, Josiah here, um, and he says... It seems I was not the only one left astray. Oh, sorry, uh, a troubling sensation has been bothering me for the last hour. A sensation of dread, regret, 
I do not know where they came from. I've sat beside this strange stage stagecoach for a little while now, and I see movement approaching. For some strange reason, I feel I need to do better when I see two of them. And another one. An unknown, tired woman from the north. She reminds me of this myself. I wonder what that means. Then next up, we have one for Jane. It seems I was not the only one left astray at the crossroads. A few of the warriors stood there in wait at a familiar looking stagecoach. As I approached the highway man, no, sorry, the, the man at arms, that was strange, shield in hand, sat there reading a letter that he clearly found on that wagon. I asked what the letter said, but I felt that I already knew. I didn't think I'd recognize any of them, but together, we began to clean up the stagecoach and make our way down the road. None of us seemed clear on why, but it, we felt that it was with great purpose. We did help a few lost souls at the roadside on our way to the inn um, with some of the supplies we found near the stagecoach. It feels odd, but it gave me something I hadn't felt in some time. Hope. Okay, wow, that is, that is a lot to go through at the start of this episode, but I think it's um, well worth it nonetheless. As I said, this is going to be our party this time around. Very similar to last time, but this time um, Dismas has been left behind and we are going to be going ahead with the Hellion. We start with Thick Blood for extra res and squeamish. Disgusted by viscera and bodily fluids. Wow, okay, that's an interesting combination. Also, these guys have changed as well. A bright future, um, round start, minus one stress. Amazing. Um, minus 15 movement resist. Um... That's also really good. Uh, l lower than 57% HP, round start, chance to de-stress. Miss the mark is unfortunate here. Um, obsessed with death and what lies beyond, of course you are. Um, and combat start when moving. Unfortunately, this is uh, the Blundering Fool is probably one of the worst ones I've seen so far. But anyways, let's push forward. We need not stay at the crossroads much longer. Let's head forward into the valley. The time for denial has passed. You must face your failures or be consumed by them. Indeed. So as you might already imagine, we're um, seeing faint remnants of the last cycle. The of potency still lingers in some of these well-worn nice. relics. Nice, okay. Yeah, we're seeing it sort of inklings and little sort of notes of what, what happened in the past, but it's not all there. It's not... Not all quite of making sense. Um, do you know what? You can have that. Why not? And then I think that, that does us, doesn't it? Oh, no. We've also got this. You can have that too. There you go. Okay. We push forward. These episodes do tend to go a little long, but Your insightful we'll push forward. during my lectures gave me pause. And I recognized in you something of a kindred spirit. Indeed. So hopefully this time we can upgrade some skills again as well with the hero shrines. And hopefully this time we can make it just that little bit further. The desperate few. Um, let this journey feed the fires in our hearts. In this world, wealth Thank is you very much. without purpose. We keep going. Trying to hit all of these as we go. And get some extra rewards Comfort from these here exhausted. and there. Ahead, only trial and tribulation. Only trial and tribulation. You're right. But yes, as with each cycle, with each loop, our characters will become slightly more aware of their surroundings and what's see, quite happening, but they still don't really get it yet. Immune to the spreading stain course we start with Jane so yeah we get vulnerable at the start of turns that's combat start yeah that's 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 going to be rough that is going to be rough but hopefully we can push forward and not have to worry about that all too much Elfa taking her first hit here a little bit of a shame but she gets the first death blow um bolster I don't know if we need to swap over this guy's skills again. I'll actually check that out. I'm not sure if... I'm pretty sure Hero Shrines unlock the skills for future runs. I might be wrong about that, but... That's what I thought, at least. We'll get some poison on you. There you go. There's a Death's Blow for you. 
There's that extra damage and some horror as well. Very nice. Kind of a brutal first fight here. Okay, let's just try and take out one of these corpses. Get it out of the way. I have a little hard time fighting you at the back line there. If we don't get those out of the way. Still, this game, I'm enamored by the, the just the slow suffering how begins. good the animations are. It's just beautiful. We've been hit by quite a good amount of um, of horror here. Probably going to take some some rather unnecessary stress. But there you go. The work okay, it clears the horror. Nice. But there you go. We take a mastery and we carry on. But yeah, I just want to quickly check something within our skills of our, of our characters here. Um, Rest and resupply. Yeah, you? so we can we can swap out Bella. So I think last time we got rid of um, we got rid of Rampart. Maybe I think Rampart's not that good for us right now. It is a movement skill, but hold the lines probably a little better for that. Uh, so we'll take Bella there and Jane. I can't remember if we changed any skills on you. Oh, of course we did. Uh, we probably want to get rid of the poison dart for the dead of night. I feel that's super useful. And then Courtney, uh, I, I think we also did change some skills up on you as well. We got rid of incision for the emboldening vapors. And that's going to be very nice. Um, and I think this puts us in a much better position. Okay, let's carry on. Make our way to the first inn. This will be a pretty much pit stop on our way to the next area. Get ready to go. The roaring heart does much for the weary body. Even more, perhaps, for the restless soul. Indeed. Indeed. Okay, so. First things first, let's take a little look. Chance to spawn a dodge token each turn until the next in. I think you need that. That's going to be very good for you. And then you two can take this buff. We don't really need the de-stress all too much, but that's pretty good. And then we can do minus three stress. There's no real need to use that right now, I don't think. Um, I don't really think that's going to be very valuable. I think we'll give you some movement resist there. Um, we've got 24 relics, so there is the possibility of maybe uh, buying something Precious from the provisions. Remind us of a time before the end. Although I have to see. I have to say, it's not that great. Uh, maximum HP increase... Do you know what? I'm going to buy a dodge token again and a maximum health increase. I think that's pretty good. Um, so we'll, we'll go back to these guys and we'll increase your max health and your max health. Looking good. And then dodge token on you. And that puts us in a good spot. Let's go to our One training. Quickly when survival demands it. Now, the, the first skill is always a little bit difficult to... Um, to sort of see what would be best. Because we probably want something that's going to be a good de-stressor. Which obviously um, Anti Prevention is very good at that. Uh, just because it's uh, across the board. But I think we probably would be better off starting off with uh, with Bolster. As that's going to remove two stress at once. As well as giving other benefits. So I'm going to go with that as our first upgrade. Uh, then Your within the Wayne right, we can change our name to, to the Iron go. Trojan, a name suggested by TEA, and of course we'll add on our stagecoach upgrade. And Consider we're going to select our route. And plan accordingly. So here we can go with the Sprawl. We know the Sprawl can be pretty difficult, avoid the Horder. And Mana Arms, gain, uh, gain when hit an extra action. Off of this we can gain plus 250 hope. Keep the light at above 40. Um, we haven't been to the Fertair yet, so I'm more inclined to go there. Kingdom, overrun with putrescence and rot. So let's uh, let's embark on this journey. Into the Fertair. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, so the do correct me if I'm wrong. We want to be keeping our light above 40, so that, I think that's achievable. Um, somewhat at least. Rather sprawling area here. So let's see what we want to do to start. We Our main goal doesn't require us to go to anywhere specific or anything. Um, the academic study. Mysterious rewards. I think we'll go to the academic study. We'll see what people actually fancy. If there's, a, if there's an incline in one way or the other. 
Okay, we've actually got two for fighting. I think we'll go for fighting instead. I'm happy to uh, I'm happy to go with what the group wants. At least somewhat. But yes, we're, we're yet to explore this area. So this is new to our crew here. Um, not that they'll have seen it anyways within their uh, actual memories. But it's also new for, for us as well. So I do know a little bit about this area from when I played uh, in the beta. Well, no, I, this is kind of a bit, but when I played like on stream the first time, it's a neat tree. The Towering Feast. We can fight with both of these two. Felther actually wants to get away straight away. I'm surprised. I, then again, she is um, a rather tired and old warrior, if that makes sense. But I think Courtney's got the right idea with purpose. Let's take this on. And we have um, some intriguing enemies here. Uh, so we probably want to go with something like Bellow off the bat. Yeah, lowering speed across the board is going to be very, very good. Um, and then let's use you to try and take out the back line. Ooh, that is not a lot of damage, though. Mother's Embrace. Mulch. Ooh, okay, we're taking some hard hits here. This is some damage I wasn't truly prepared for. At the same time, I think we're um, we're fine. These guys will probably, yeah, these guys have fairly high blight resist. So let's say instead use the blinding gas here. Unfortunately, that's a resist. The sickly sweet that is going to blind us. This this could be a troubling battle right off the bat here. This could be a very troubling fight. Unfortunate miss with a pick to the face there. If it bleeds, they do have a low bleed resist, so I could go with if it bleeds. I still want to try and take out this front one first. As you can see, though, the HP pools of these enemies is relatively high. I'm going to use some Invalid Vapors here. You're getting strength from that nice. That's a hard hit right there. Already, I'm seeing some, some difficulties here. There's another good hit. Of course, Josiah. He's made of stronger stuff. He knows what he's doing. Health is looking a little bad right now. We've death to dodge you. That's at least weakened you for now. We can probably finish you off. Unfortunately, another death to dodge. That's a waste of a turn there. But there you go. There's the death blow. We'll try and blind you again. Okay, there you go. That time we actually hit it. Nice. Okay, the movement is slightly annoying, but luckily we have the, we have a team that's very capable of moving around and still being able to hit most of their marks, so I don't mind that all too much. Uh, I'm going to heal you up with this and give you some stealth. I think where possible, that's going to be a good idea. Okay, strike you down. We're just going to go whole hell. There you go, felt with the crit. Go whole hog on this one enemy here. Um, I'm going to give you the vapors. Mulch once more. Okay, there's the stress level going up. There's the sickly sweet again. Wow, this is, uh, this is a very, very tough first fight. I gotta say. A very tough first fight. Josiah. It's not looking good. And there's a... Big, big crit on you. Bolster to lower that stress a little bit. Give us a nice block too. Ah, oh, The death door resists. They're brutal, man. They're brutal. Okay, we're going to have to do some healing now. Not too bad. This, this enemy at the back is still at full HP, mind you. Like, this enemy, he is almost dead, but... I don't think that's going to help all too much. This has been a very tough first fight here. We hit another Desidor strike. But effective. And we carry on with a pick to the face. Ooh, okay. Interesting. It consumed a corpse, enables powerful skills. That could be uh, troubling. We'll stack up some bleed now, so I think. So Unsteady stances. Okay. Takes hold. Indeed it does. This this could be difficult. Um don't think Bellow's gonna do much. Defender's not really gonna do much either. 
because we don't really have the defense ourselves. I think we've just got to go for the damage and hope for the best, really. Stacking up that bleed. Oh, it resisted this time. There's some healing for you. The, the powerful skills I'm a little uh, dubious of. Yeah, the blight there. As well as the stress. Okay. Blight there isn't too good. We are doing good damage, though, to this guy. He's not getting many turns in. We're consistently hitting for a good amount. Still going to go for the bleed because I think it's valuable. We don't have any healing left. Uh, I, I'm going to go for the Vapors with you again, I think. The Vapors have proven to be pretty useful. There's that. Luckily, we resisted the bleed there. Boxing Gloves gives us a bit of strength there, too. Hit him onto Death's Door, good. We're going to be a little weak coming out of this, but we should be fine. There you go. The bleed hits for the Death's Blur. And we, we come out of that victorious. Well I think it's clear we need some resistances among the group here. Hello, I think Jin, you can take that. Um, Josiah, you can have that. Why not? Okay. Stress has got a little out of hand for that first fight, but I think we're okay. We're going to go this way. I'm sure none of you will take uh, any problem with that. And we actually get two assistance this encounters in a row here. Good way to keep our light going. Good way to keep our light up. I'm hoping we can heal back in the time it takes us to get to our next fight. You never know. We might be able to get back to up to a decent amount of health here. We'll probably end up hitting five stress on a few of these guys as well. This area is much more stressful than we've seen prior. The desperate few. Okay, so unfortunately we're not going to gain much here. Bomb push up. Belfer's really not vibing with the group at the moment. Eager to ply his trade. Clearly... Belfer does not have the, the group's interest in my, best interest in mind. But at the same time, these three have a, have a dynamic between them that even they don't really know exists. Whereas Belfer is coming in from the outside. She hasn't lived through the lives they've lived through. At least not yet. Of course, that will change soon. But for now, he's a bit of an outsider. Okay, so everyone's pretty much on board with this. Um, yes, Josiah, you can go for that. An impressive haul. Put it to good use. Very nice. Ooh, what the hell's this? Produces various concoctions and powders. Wow, that sounds awesome. Also, plus one speed that can go to um, to you, I guess. It's good to get you on the speed there. Cool. That's that's going to be really good if we can get that stagecoach upgrade in. Next up, we have a lair. Now, lairs are kind of interesting. I'm actually kind of tempted to go whole hog on this lair. Odds carefully. This will not be easy. Because basically a lair is um, a bit of combat where we can keep going and eventually fight a boss. They can be quite tough, but yield huge rewards. Steal yourself. The hulking horror inside the will house. not fall easily. Okay, so the backline guy is the main one we want to be going for here. These two are fodder, can be consumed. So yeah, we want to be taking out the backline guy first, by, uh, for sure. Don't know how easy that's going to end up being. I'm just going to go whole hog with the damage here. I think it's better. I don't know how these enemies function after the fact, but... I'm guessing they still attack, but... We can leave that before we find out. Unfortunately, he did not miss, but we did resist. Very nice. We did at least resist. Okay. We are going to have to fight one of these just because she can't quite reach. Unfortunately, it's in the third slot, not fourth. Here we go with the headbutt. That's actually a lot more damage than I was expecting. And it's a position move. Beast of Burden. Okay, that, is, that has pushed Felther quite far back. A lot further back than I was expecting, actually. That's a nice crit on you. Go with an ounce of prevention for everyone. Just try and stop that blight a little early. There's another headbutt coming in. This time we resisted the move. 
Let me go if it bleeds in the back line. Oh, if that hadn't a resisted. If that hadn't a resisted. Beast of Burden. Okay, you're pulling us forward again. That actually kind of works for us. Tend the flock. I'm hoping this guy doesn't go for the... Um, the e he didn't. Good. We got him. Early results are encouraging. Okay. I think now we go with some if it bleeds to get some bleed on these guys. I'm actually surprised that didn't work, but there you go. Um, I'm going to bolster with you. Lower your stress company. a little bit. Give us a high and mighty amount of block. And you know what? Let's just heal you up. Because we're not... Because we're going to miss anyways, we might as well heal you up. Wow. Felfa is really taking a beating. I have to say, it feels like she's um, she's been somewhat singled out. She's taking the most stress by far. She's been taking the most damage by far. There's a nice death blow on you. A brilliant conclusion. That thing reposted me. Wasn't expecting that. This will get rid of the blight as well. Nice. Yeah, I gotta say, that's gonna do very little damage, sir. The repost kind of hurts, especially with the blight on the repost, but I don't feel like it's that that terrible. Especially when we kill them like that. I'm, I, I'm gonna say, well, let's advance. We're, we're doing well so far. That last combat wasn't too bad. I have not seen this thing before, and I have a feeling we're not gonna... We're not going to like what it does. We can Iron Swan it, though, which is really good for damage. Ooh, it even made him lose his balance somewhat. I think we're going to stick with this strategy of taking out the back line um, and then going for everyone else afterwards. Especially that blind. I love that stumble he does when getting hit. Beast of Burden here seems like a strange attack. It's, it's kind of putting us in a rough spot. Um, forward three. Yeah, I'm going to do this just to pull myself back to the front. And it also immobilizes us and gives us some block. I think that's necessary. Felther going, getting hit again, but luckily she does uh, dodge out the way. There's a nice crit with a thrown dagger. This guy's going down quickly. Felther needing the healing as always. But this should hopefully grow the relationship between Courtney and Felther. I think she should hopefully uh, realize how uh, influential Courtney is within the battlefield. And take that to heart somewhat. So I can't Iron Swan from here, of course. I can if it bleeds, though. And that is a crit, too. That's a crit bleed, also. That's really good. Okay, this guy's going down fast. We, we've got a good handle on this guy. The, these goats are actually a little more treacherous than I thought. But I think we're still doing fine. If we can get another crit here. No crit, but hitting for five damage. Two over five on that is pretty good. And then I think we're going to blind and gas him once more. Unfortunately, he does resist this time. But this should secure his death. As long as he doesn't eat one of these things. If he doesn't eat one of these goats, we should be fine. So I think we're going to just smack down on some of these goats now. Oh, I didn't think about that. Death's door. Yep. Okay, it, okay, it gives him regen. He's not off death's door yet. It does, however, give him a powerful attack. Which weakened all of us. Wasn't expecting that. I'll admit, wasn't expecting that. But I'm hoping this finishes him off. Nope, it doesn't. God damn it, this is going to be brutal. There we go. Persistence that was close. That was close. Greatest of this isn't going to hit for much. Yeah, I'm going to say I probably wouldn't even blight him, but there you go. Plus two stress there, that's fine. Health's looking not great. Let's give you a hit of the Involving Vapors. I think that's going to help a lot. Courtney is good at uh, buffing up her fellow man. I managed to push you all the way to the front. We do not want that. God damn, your health is low now as well. Okay, that finishes you off, I think. Wait a minute. Two. You've got two health. Good. It does finish you off. Although we can't really do much else, to be honest. Uh, I guess we take get rid of the corpse, because we can't do much else. Didn't do anything anyways. That's a hit for 12. That's beautiful. Just leave Courtney alone, and we'll be fine. She cannot even heal herself. She's out of position.
And there's the decibel on you. Make Another sure you don't get a turn. Clear. God damn it. Did you have to? You have to go for Courtney. Now, I don't know how much health she's going to gain upon going into this next round. I'm going to try it anyways. I'm going to try it anyways because I'm pretty sure she gets some amount of healing. And this could be incredible if we manage to pull it off. This could also be the biggest mistake in a very short uh, episode, but I'm trying it. Not as much healing as I was hoping for, I'll tell you that. That's a crit for eight, though, straight off that. that. That thing's got a lot of health. Holy hell. God damn, this could be very bad. Okay. Iron Swan is going to allow us to get some good damage on you. The hunger overwhelms all reason. Okay, so we get a debuff of minus maximum HP, but we get some brief healing. Interesting debuff. Attempting aura. We were both resisted. Good. Please don't. Please don't hit Courtney. She's really not feeling it right now. The damage we're dealing to this thing is fine, but not great, I'll admit. Oh, these both got tempted in. It wastes a turn as well, which is the problem. We're running out of healing rapidly. Like I said, this may have been a mistake, but I feel like we have to make these mistakes. Yeah, I do not like that. Minus 31% maximum HP. You're wasting all your turns, idiots. I, I need turns to do things. This is going to be so difficult. Especially with a crit of 15 and bleed. Okay, we're dead. This was a huge mistake. We're 100% we're, we're dead. I did not realize this boss was so, so bad. Holy hell, this boss is bad. Holy, holy hell, this boss is so bad. Like, look how much health I've done to this thing. And everyone's on death's door, pretty much. It's the tempting auras. Maybe I've got to kill these things? Is that the way to go? Is that the way to go? Do I kill these little nubbins here? I guess I'm going to try it. That did not really do anything. <laughs> oh my god, this boss is crazy looking too. F yeah, 28 HP. Felt is dead. I thought, I thought it wouldn't be as hard as this. <laughs> All set back. Nothing more. Yeah. We going down. It's th this harvest hunger thing's brutal. Absolutely brutal. It forces you to eat. Does it every single round. Oh my god, it's, it's savage. And you keep attacking. Stop making him eat. <laughs> he ha he's had enough. He's had enough. My goodness. Of course you resisted. He's had enough. We're actually doing okay on like dealing damage to her, but not really enough. I think Felth is dead in her first journey. Just stop making us eat the meat. I don't want to eat the meat. <laughs> I don't want to eat the meat. <laughs> Gonna make him eat. Of course it is. Minus 76%. He's got 13 max HP. How do I get rid of this? The slow suffering begins. This is some death door resist if I've ever seen it. Stop with the tempting aura. We've had enough. Mm. 
My goodness. This is so brutal. <laughs> Try and take this thing out. You can take them out by the looks of it, but it's not going well. How are you all the way back over here? What's going on? It's still not dead. How? How is anyone still alive right now? This is a miracle. This is an absolute miracle that anyone's still alive. What on earth are you guys made of? Dragged back from the brink. You're blind to my pain. Get gone, you meaty fuck. Okay, there's some bleed on you. It's a lot of stress. Didn't even take us off death's door. Where's my healing? How is no one dead? <laughs> it's gotta happen. All set back. Nothing more. What's going on? <laughs> I, I just can't, I can't even. Words can't describe how confusing this is. There's a death blur. Felfa wasn't made for this world. She got absolutely beat up and there you go. There goes another. And another. Fight through the fatigue. God damn. <laughs> I can't, this boss is absurdly strong. Oh, I can't use Dead of the Night on my teammates' bodies. Shame. Yeah, this boss is absurdly strong. Like, this, this aroma thing, I don't know about that. Maybe this is just something that you're not meant to do for a real long time until you've got a lot of upgrades, but this feels impossible. <laughs> Thing's got so much health. But once again, Jane is the last that remains. By the way, I do realize I could use Absence to save her, but I'm kind of like, eh. <laughs> is there really any point? <laughs> I guess I'll try it, why not? Nah, I guess I won't. An unforeseen complication. Do not despair. There is nobility in the attempt. But well, that, that was brutal. Either way, I hope you guys enjoyed. There's bound to be some short cycles just like this one here and there, especially as we're figuring out the game. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one. right to fear the world. It has gone mad.